Okay, guys, it's smarthelping.com. And what have we got today? Well, none other than the dry cleaning business. I built a financial model specifically for that. And I'm going to go through it with you now. So, number one, we have the cost tab. And you can see startup costs here. You simply enter, you've got your items, which I've gotten up to. You can enter up to 34 items. And I'm going to group these so if you want to view everything on one screen, you can minimize that so you can see the other inputs that you need to put into the cell. No, but basically, you change all the cells shaded in this color. I've built it so you can enter all the related items. I put in, you know, building purchase, a washer, or a dryer, tumble dryer, dry cleaning machine, roller iron. All these will be dependent on, you know, the specific operation that you plan on doing, but at least you can have a list of items here and a count of them and then the cost per item and then you get your total cost. So this tells you right here, given all of this information that I've randomly input, um, that the startup cost is $300,000. You can also put, if you would like to finance anything, right now I've got 40%. If I put, let's say, 50% just for even numbers, it would mean 150000 needs to be financed. And you can see the finance number automatically populates, and then you can put in terms of the loan here. Let's say I put in 25%. Now it should be half of that, so 75000 and yep, it is. So that's the first kind of module is building your startup costs secondly you have your ongoing cost so this is what it's going to take to keep the operation running so I've gotten three I mean you might have more and this is why I've included all these other extra costs but we have three types of workers here and then the count of each worker that you have in their annual cost or their salary they might be um, hourly and they might have other you just you need to kind of estimate what their annual cost would be per job type and you would put that there and then you get a total cost so if I were to put this to 2 you can see now the total cost jumps from 20,000 to 40 or if I do 5 it goes to 100,000 annually uh, so you've got mm, you know I've just put some things in here like rent so if this was say 0 meaning you didn't purchase a building and you had to rent you say maybe rent your annual rents uh, I don't know maybe hundred thousand dollars a year you would put that there and then that'd be an ongoing cost but you wouldn't have the initial big cost of the building so then your you know startups gonna be a little bit less expensive but those variables are here for you to play with um, then we have our total ongoing costs and you can also put a percentage here this means uh, two percent would mean that all these expenses are going to increase by two percent each year but I also put a cap on it so you can enter what year you want these ex this expense growth to, s growth to stop so let's say I put year three here and I think right now this is P&L set up for five so you can see the expenses I have written in go up you can see here, let's say rent is at 100, 102, 104, and then you can see since I put year 3 as the stop year, you can see year 4 and 5 have the same expenses as year 3, but it grows until then. And that helps it because if you have a longer um, model you're trying to do, like say 20 years, you don't want to straight line that growth for 20 years, it's going to give you some crazy inflated number. You might want to have, say, you know, you're starting your expenses or revenues at an expense at a certain level you know they could have different times when you cap it off but your revenues obviously if you put 10 percent you might do 10 percent for the first five years but then after that you know it gets the numbers can get kind of exponential and it might not fit as well for you so that added functionality has been built for the user so those are all the cost assumptions next we have revenue you would enter the start month. This in, this is going to also drive the debt service, but it's the start month, which would be the first month and the first day of that month of the year you plan on starting operations. That's what you're going to put here. So right now I just put January 1, 2017. Put your number of years of operation. You can see right now it's at 5. If I change this to 25, P&L 
you can see automatically updates to go out 25 years and everything also populates down here and you can see that uh, our our exit multiple at 1.25 this is just saying you know what's the EBITDA in year 25 and it's going to give you a multiple of that and give you the value of the business if you plan on selling it obviously there's a million different things that go into valuation but that's just a rough a rough way a rough number to get you just to show extra cash flow in that final year if you do plan on selling you can see it's populating right here at 60,000 um, if we put this at zero it would just mean no sale is being modeled and you can see it up now the sale of business line is at zero let's put it back to 1.25 then we have your revenue driver. So for dry cleaning, the best way, the simplest, most easy way I could think for um, you to model this would be items per day, the average ticket price, ticket price per item, and then how many working days you have in the year, and then you just multiply all those together, and we get our estimated annual revenue. Then we've bu I've built in annual revenue growth, so this works the same as expense growth, but it's for revenues and you can also choose the number of years you want that revenue growth to happen and then when it caps off at that um, point so right here it's been f at five and you can see here if we look at the revenue yeah, let's, you can see one two three four five oh sorry those are costs Revenues up here. It's only got one line because we're we're building the revenue on that revenue tab. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, and then your five is at two sixty three. It flattens out. Uh, so that's it for the. That's how we're building revenue. Um, oh man, spammers are calling me. Uh, then we have the financing, which I've already showed you. This automatically populates. Uh, We've got the return summary, which I think is nice, and this is just, it's automatically going to populate everything here based on your assumptions, but you can see you're held 25, IRRR of 29%, holy cow, three calls in a row of spam. What is going on here? Dang it. So you've got 25 years, IRR of 29%, break even year automatically changes, so right now it's at 6 initial cash investment is 37,000 this this is included the financing so it's saying well you've actually only had to invest 37,000 since you financed a certain percentage of startup costs okay what is going on here I'm getting called off the hook okay I gotta deal with this standby one second Holy cow, that was crazy. I just got a spam call like six times in a row on my phone and it would not stop. And it was, I answered it finally and it was a spammer. I don't even know how that's possible. They can all are allowed to do that. <sighs> okay. Anyway, initial cash investment, that's based on your actual cash outlay. Not the total investment since you are could be possibly financing some of it. Now, if you don't finance any of it, and you put a zero here, whatever's your total startup cost is just going to be your investment. So you can see here now it's 50000 and the returns all adjust. So you've got total cash returned. So this is not including the cost going out at first. Your ROI, which is 21x over 25 years, and then your annualized percentage returned. Now this does include the sale as well if there is anything in there. So it's saying you're making 84% of your initial cash invested for 25 years. That's $42,000 a year. Net cash does include the initial startup cost, which is basically nearly the same since the startup cost is only $50,000. There's not much difference in these numbers. And the returns. Now if we were to put this cost back up, let's put rent back down to nothing. And say you buy the building for two hundred fifty thousand, and you finance forty percent. You see how the returns all change. Obviously, the cash flow has gone up because we've taken that rent expense, that hundred thousand dollars a month, and it's gone away. So now you're making that much more money. 
Now the return though, because you're now invested in 180,000 instead of 50, so that's going to affect your annualized percentages. But you can see your annualized percentages are a little bit lower, but the actual cash amount is higher, and that's just because um, you're getting more cash back over time, uh, even with the debt service, which is included in here, and uh, the percentages are just a factor of what you're investing in. So this, you know, is a nice way to see how much money you might be able to make a year, non-discounted, obviously, if you're, you know, starting up this type of a business. Finally, we have our P&L summary, which is just, you've got your top line revenue, and all this is obviously dynamic based on all the inputs you put into the prior tabs. You have your total cost, EBITDA, and then you've got debt service, you've got mortgage. So if you sell the business, if you plan on that cash coming in and you still have a mortgage balance, you'll need to write in the mortgage balance for that year and then it will come off the cash flow. So say let's we let's say we do it for 10 years and we are financing. So in 10 years what's the balance? Well, if we go to the finance tab year 10 well depending on what month the balance would be different but it's around the balance is around 300 no sorry 87,000 so we put 87,000 here so that's going to come off of your cash flow and so you've got your sale your business here less the the mortgage balance uh, less debt service and then plus your EBITDA and then that shows your cash flow for that year we've also got running cash flow so this in you can see if I sum up all the cash flow it's 1.157 that's act that should equal which it does the last year's running cash balance and then you also see the break-even year will auto populate based on your running cash flow when it turns positive that's based on the amount of cash you're putting out at the beginning and then what cash you're getting returned each year including debt service okay well I guess that about explains it I think anybody could use this after that description and uh, this is an upper tier model so that means it's going to fall into the $125 um, price range or tag it's 125 bucks and you should note that on smarthelping.com which the link is in the description box below for you to go through and purchase it um, I do offer, I think if you want to get a deal, I do offer all the upper tier models for, I think, one price of 185 and I think I've got over five or six. Uh, but if you want them individually, it's $125 uh, a pop. Okay. I uh, hope this helps you guys, and uh, have fun in the dry cleaning business. This is SmartHelping.com.